Hello and welcome, I am Joel from Oz, a small time YouTuber and Twitch streamer, live on Friday nights. I enjoy a creative challenge that comes along with this hobby and in this series of video we are going to get your stream audio sounding crystal clear. In this first episode we are going to be doing a bit of an introduction into why you may need this setup, the pros and cons of this setup, and what software you will need to get started. I'll be placing an episode list down in the description down below as well as a link to the documentation that I use to create this if you want something to read through instead of listening to all of the tutorial. When you first install OBS the default sound is enough to get you started. A mic input channel for your beautiful voice and a desktop input for everything else. This is okay for a simple stream with you and a game but when things start to get more complicated with additional voice chat like Discord and music and other bits and pieces, things can start to fall apart. This is because all of those other inputs are sharing the same channel and linked together. So if you want things to turn up or down separately from each other, you cannot do it. They're all linked to the same channel. The goal here is to separate these programs into their own channels that we can then customize separately and ultimately apply filters to that smartly govern those noise levels for a clearer and more pleasant listening experience for your audience, including lowering music and game volume dynamically when you and your friends speak and returning it to a higher volume to fill in any quiet moments or allow your audience to hear what's going on in a game during any sort of dialogue or action sequences. The goal of having this more intricate audio setup is to be heard by your audience dynamically with sound compression and above other audio being recorded have Discord untethered from the desktop audio, also dynamic with sound compression and ducking underneath the primary speaker, you, and being able to be heard above the desktop noise because it's no longer tethered to that. Have the desktop sound being adjustable separately from the spoken audio so if you have a particularly loud game you can turn that down. And with things being recorded onto separate tracks, things like copyrighted music can be removed in post. So if you have music playing in the background, you can remove that if you record it from OBS. And being able to have audio channels that aren't heard by your audience, such as chat notifications. And best of all, this setup is cheap. It only cost me 25 Australian dollars, give or take a little bit. And that was only because I need an extra channel for my chat notifications to come through. Whereas you will not need that if you are not running chat notifications. All of these pros do come with a downside though. Some of these cons include time consuming and difficult to set up and maintain, hence why I've made these videos to begin with. It's prone to failure and bugs. Unfortunately, there's a lot of software working together here. Not confined to recording and streaming, so it must be active at all times and thus, if it does fail, it can also affect you when you are not streaming. And it can be broken by Windows updates, resetting things back to default. All of this means that it requires a decent understanding of how Windows, Voice Meter, and OBS work together so that you can maintain your audio on your system. In this series, I will explain how to set this up and how, to my understanding, these systems work, arming you with the knowledge to use and maintain these systems to the best suit your needs and to make your recording or streams sound more professional. Key software we'll be using for this setup is Windows, obviously, the sound control panel, Voice made a banana or a potato, both should do the same job. Uh, virtual audio cable, OBS Studio, Streamlabs OBS should work the same way, though some options may be displayed represented differently. Uh, pretzel, this is what I use for my music, but the same pr principle should apply to whatever music software you use, as long as it's only being used for music. And chatty but that's only if you need chat notifications as that's the only thing I use it for. Links to all of this software will be down in the description below. The only other software that I might reference in one of my later tips and tricks episodes is the Elgato Stream Deck software. If you have an Elgato Stream Deck then you probably have the software but just letting you know that it's only for those tips and tricks later on. Now I'm not going to walk through installation for all of this software. But in the next episode, we'll start talking about audio channel routing and getting the basic foundation of our audio channel sorted out so that we can then move on to using them for other things. Now, I'm sure this is pretty cliche on YouTube by now, but please 
like the video. I, I'm not even fussed if you don't subscribe, if you're only here for this series, but it does mean a lot to me if you do like this video, the show, that you do appreciate it as it is taking a lot of work to do. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.